questions, uh, feel free to ask even in Thai language. Uh, I have my colleague here, Kun Apichat, he is going to translate, yeah. So nice uh, meeting all of you here. So uh, the topic today, I just want to share a bit on what's going on uh, when we talk about digital, digitalization, especially in condition monitoring, right? Uh, before I go into that, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, like you can see behind, uh, my name is Kiran. Uh, I'm the digital sales leader for uh, Bentley Nevada business. Uh, we are part of Baker Hughes company. I've uh, been with Bentley uh, 10 years now, uh, did multiple different roles uh, all the way from machinery diagnostics, uh, uh, predictive analytics, uh, you know, machine learning, project management, deployment, and currently my role is the sales leader for Asia. Yeah? Uh, I'm from Malaysia, I'm Malaysian. Uh, currently I'm based out of Singapore. Yeah? So quick introduction of myself. Uh, and like I said, uh, I want to keep this session interactive. Uh, you know, it's no point for me to just keep talking and talking and talking, right? So if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. Uh, we have extra mic, you know, you can ask questions. So I'll do two parts of sharing today. First part is, I just want to share our observation in terms of digitalization, right? I mean, this is one fancy buzzword. Things have been accelerated during COVID, post-COVID, right? And a lot of requirement to go to digital, to work remotely, and you need to have all that tools, right? Uh, but how to do it, right? You know, I mean, people can say that you just buy some software, you have some dashboard, uh, you are digital, right? But I think it's, it's beyond than that. So that's what I wanted to share. Probably that's on the uh, first few slides. And then I will go in and share a bit on uh, how we can help uh, from Bentley Nevada, how are we helping to address some of the gaps uh, that we see and how we can help some of our users and customers uh, to achieve the right outcome and the value out of the initiatives that we are doing. So that, that's what I'm going to do. Probably take me like 30, 40 minutes today and then we can have a Q&A &A, Q &A session here. Right. I'll start off with what we read from the Forbes from the McKinsey read a study which is telling us that 70% of the organization have either implemented or working on digital transformation or digital uh, deployment, right? But unfortunately, among this 70%, there's only 16% of organization actually have successfully improved their performance uh, and sustained the change of digital transformation, right? So why this happened? Right, like I said, digital transformation is not that getting some fancy application or software being deployed in your organization, right? It comes with a lot of other uh, factors, a lot of big responsibility, right? Now you have made such a huge investment in digital. How do you want to sustain that? Are your people ready to take up this new technology? Is there any process there to, to take this technology and then start creating the value and then get the return of investment of the uh, whatever investment that you made, right? So that's what we are here. So what we what we are trying to do in Bentley, right? What we observe, there's a lot of silo when you talk about digital transformation, right? I mean, people talk about AI, uh, machine learning, dashboard, predictive analytics, you know, and then you have the CBM, uh, you have portables, you know, and all these most of the time end up being silo. Silo, when I say is that, okay, you have one software for machine learning, for example, or predictive analytics, and then you have another one for condition-based monitoring, and then you have one software for asset performance management, and then you have your historian. There's a lot of things happening, right? So what we are trying to address is that we are trying to break the silo. You know, how we can come up with an integrated ecosystem, right, where better value can be generated by the users, you know. So you, you might have already your condition monitoring solution, how you can get more out of it, right? I think that's what we at Bentley Nevada are trying to do. And that's in our roadmap. We are even adding more features into what we have just to make that we have this integrated ecosystem and try to break that silos. Yeah. Right. Now, coming back to the topic that I mentioned, right? To have a successful digital transformation or digitalization, you need to have these three key important pillars, uh, you know? And, and what I always call as a, you need to have the right asset management workflow. 
you know, if you don't have an asset management workflow, most of the time, whatever solution or software that you purchase is not going to create value to you. So the value creation is very important. Now, why I say is, is okay, now let's say you have a machine learning or predictive analytics, right? When an alarm comes up from that software, who should look at the alarm in your organization, right? And then who should do a root cause analysis and who is going to do the real maintenance work, right? So that process need to be there. And do you have the right people to do that, you know? So from the alarm detection to the diagnostic and also to the work execution, right? Most of the time when I engage with more, a lot of different users, customers, right? Like I said, I've been doing this for the past five, six years. Uh, we often see huge gap in terms of the process and people, right? Because technology is there, tool is there, is just to enable us, right? And there's various kind of tools, right? Like, like some I have listed down here, right? I mean, you have tools at the plant level, like your DCS, your SCADA, and then you have your condition monitoring, like system ones, you know, and then you have your diagnostic software, you have your historian. And then now when we talk about remote monitoring, then we talk about corporate level, right? How the OT system to the IT system is being integrated. Obviously, cybersecurity is part of it remote application and the big AI, machine learning, predictive analytics capability, right? And you have your CMMS system as well. So these are all tools, right? You can have all the greatest tool, you can invest a lot, but if you don't have the right process and the people, most of the time, it's a recipe for failure, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that one key important thing is what is the asset management workflow, right? You need to define or have a defined asset management workflow when you talk about digitalization, right? You want to implement something, so who is going to manage that? Does the people is competent enough? Or what is the process, right? And that's where you can create a sustainable journey. And, and digitalization is not that you, 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 look, you assess a solution for six months and then you buy a software and then you think you are done, right? It's a continuous process, right? And it's a long journey. I mean, at least this is what we have observed and this is the feedback that we get when we talk to people who has implemented digital transformation and the feedback that we are getting from them. Right. Now, prior to that, you know, when you want to embark into digital transformation, you know, I mean, we just list out a few things, you know, what we call as a transition strategy and plan, what you want to do, right? I think the very first thing and very important thing is that to understand what is your current status, right? So where are you right now? What type of software you have? What type of tools you have? What is your people's competency, right? And then try to understand what are the use cases that you have. When I say use case, it's like failure modes that keep recurring in your plant, in your site, right? Maybe you have a pump that every year you need to change the pump because you have a recurring failure mode, right? And that is the most painful equipment. So probably that is the issue that you want to solve, right? So your current state will be, you know, I have like a 10 failures in pump every year. And then you want to mitigate that, you know, so your desired state, maybe in the next one to two years, you want to have the right software tools with the people and process to make sure that there's zero failures happening on that pump, right? So that is your desired state. Now you have that high level KPI, then you define, okay, for you to move from X to Y, what you need to do, right? You might have already some existing investment done on that pump. For example, you might have any existing condition-based monitoring software, hardware's already deployed, you might have some historian already deployed, you know, how you want to use that better, you know, to address this issue. So that should be your priority, right? Instead of putting money, buying another new solution, you first look at how can I get more out of what I have, right? I think a lot of organization is doing that right now. And then the next thing is that how you collaborate and engage with digital transformation partners, right? I mean, I say here partners because our observation when we look at this digital space, I can say that there is no one vendor can say that they can do everything. There's no magic, you know. Initially, people thought that, that uh, oh, digital, I buy this software, I can solve everything, right? But I think now people is coming to realization, people is getting matured, they know that no one vendor can solve everything, right? And that's why we need partners, we need collaboration, right? So someone is good at condition-based monitoring, for example, right? You want to proceed with that, and then you bring in another partner on the predictive analytics, or you bring your cloud cloud partner, you bring your cyber cybersecurity partner, right? You want to create that ecosystem to make sure that it is successful, yeah. 
So that's the third point, right? And then the, the other one is that, that we enable a lot is the machine condition monitoring, right? Because a lot of people often think that when you have all these fancy AI predictive analytics, you don't need to look at condition-based monitoring, right? The magic can happen there, right? But I think, like I said, self-realization, we hear from feedback from customer, I think these two need to complement each other, right? Whatever condition monitoring you have, plus uh, the advanced technology that you want to deploy, you know, that's how you can get a successful digital transformation, yeah? And the last thing is analytics. You know, I, I, I'm a strong supporter of analytics. I think analytics really help uh, users, you know, uh, for anomaly detection because you cannot have like 10 engineers looking at 10,000 assets or 20,000 assets, right? You want to have some tool to help you. So analytics really helps, but the right analytics, you know, and how you want to scale the ability of the analytics uh, to be able to give you the right alerts. And at end of the day, the outcome is you want to get informed when something is happening, right, way before catastrophic failure happens. And that will basically help you in terms of the ROI, uh, improve in performance, availability, and reliability of the plant and the equipment. I think that's the end game here, yeah. Right. And just to share to you a bit, you know, I touched a bit on this, you know, people think that the digital transformation can happen very quick within six months or one year, right? But actually, it's a huge roadmap and it's a huge journey, right? What we have seen here is that it's at least three to five years journey, you know, for you to have a successful outcome and a value creation. And in throughout this journey, you have multiple things that you want to do, right? So obviously, if you look at it on a very early stage, you want to come up with a machinery action plan. What what mean by machinery action plan is that, like I said, you might have 10,000 equipment in your plant and you want to do, example, start with basic, right? You want to do an asset strategy. Asset strategy, you want to list down the criticality of all your assets, and you want to come up with the right maintenance strategy, right? So you don't want to deploy uh, AI on all the 10,000 assets, right? It might be very costly, right? Probably some of the pumps, uh, it's cheaper to just replace the pump, right? Rather than you install some wireless sensor or you put some condition-based monitoring, right? So that type of assessment, that type of decision you make when you do the right machinery action plan, you know, which is the, I, I would say the first step, right? When you are in your assess mode, right? And you also do a gap analysis to understand what you have right now and what you want to achieve and how you can achieve it with the right tools, technology, and people here. Then you can move into how the architecture look like. You know, when I say architecture, when we talk about digital, it's a lot revolves around software, right? And it, it need to have a right architecture, how different solution is going to integrate, how all these solution is going to get into your business network or even cloud with a cyber secure way, way, right? And this is where most organization we see right now, they are starting to get in the IT team to be part of the process team as well, you know, to come up with these architectures here. And when you do that, obviously you want to move to the next round, which you had a budget approval, you want to invest, and you start the project, right? You start the project. Most of the organization we see, they start small. They start with uh, what they call as a proof of concept or pilot project or what. When they start seeing results, they start seeing the value, they scale it up, right? I think that is some of the best practice that we are observing. And obviously, when you do a POC or pilot, uh, you want to evaluate after a few months, you know, you want to evaluate, okay, whether it's, it's giving me the right outcome or what, you know. If it's, if, it's, if it's giving the right outcome, like I said, then where the scale happens. Scale can easily happen after one year, after two years, after three years, right? Scale happens during the scaling period, you want to sustain that as well. You have the right people, you train the people, you make sure the process is there. So you have the successful digital transformation, right? And, and like I said, it's a journey. It takes time. But if we do it in the right way, and, and some of what we observe, we have listed down here, you can have a huge success. And you can really have a lot of savings and hit the right KPS that you are trying to achieve here, right? So th this is the first half of my presentation. So I think I'll pause here first. Any, any one of you, if you have any question related, this is a, a bit of sharing in terms of digital transformation. Right? If you have any question, feel free to ask before I move, move into how Bentley Nevada is helping the user and what we have within our uh, portfolio. Yeah. คราวนี้เนี่ยวันเนี้ยที่มาคุยเนี่ยมันมันเวลา 
ผื่อใครสนใจในเรื่องตรงนี้เดี๋ยวหลังตรงนี้เราสามารถที่ยินดีเข้าไปที่โรงงานไปลงในดีเทลแล้วก็แชร์กันว่าเออเรามีอะไรบ้างคราวนี้ที่คุณกิรันแกพักช่วงตรงนี้นะครับไม่ทราบมีใครมีข้อสงสัยตรงไหนสอบถามเป็นภาษาไทยก็ได้ครับแล้วเดี๋ยวผมอธิบายแกโอเคถ้าไม่มีเดี๋ยวขออนุญาตไปต่อแต่อย่างที่บอกกันนะครับว่าคือแค่หนึ่งชั่วโมงเนี่ยมันดีอย่างที่เขาบอกอะ่ะมันมันมันมีไทม์เฟรมของมันค่อนข้างยาวอยู่เรายินดีที่จะเข้าไปคุยไปไปหาโซลูชันด้วยกันโอเคคุณคิรัน you can continue ครับ alright thank you right so what coming back to my first uh, slide right I mentioned about trying to break the silo right trying to break the silo is what we at Baker Hughes we are trying to do with the integrated asset management right so we don't only look at the asset condition monitoring but we also look at the holistic asset management right so I'll go a bit detail on this Uh, what we are trying to do and how we can help the users, right? So, if you look at this, there is a four pillar here, and traditionally these are all four different kind of application, right? So, you have your asset condition, uh, which is condition monitoring systems or predictive analytics, right? So, pretty much it's a software or hardware. Uh, you know, it alerts when the machine condition deteriorate. You have alarms coming, anomaly detection, right? Uh, and you take action. So, most organization, you 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 are doing something here, right? Uh, I mean, either using a conventional way of uh, monitoring using historian, or you have condition monitoring software, or a predictive analytics, right? So this is one application most of the organization have. Now, if you move. Some organization they do their reliability uh, asset strategy uh, in different kind of software solution, right? Uh, and basically, what you do here is that you know you generate the maintenance action plan, you come up with the cost effective uh, uh, maintenance planning, cost versus risk, you know, criticality assessment, and then you also have module to look at how you carry out your root cause analysis, failure mode effect analysis, so pretty much on defect elimination. And and all these will eventually link up to the work execution. Work execution is there where you do your maintenance action, right? So you 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 create your work orders in your CMMS system like Maximo, SAP, right? So most of the organization have all these things, but pretty much in silo, you know. So you have uh, a condition monitoring solution from uh, uh, company X, and then asset strategy from somewhere else. And most of the time, what we observe is that there is no clear integration. Among all these, right? And when there is no clear integration, what happens is that you tend to lose a lot of value. So you don't know what is happening within the asset strategy, and when it's a failure happening, being triggered in asset condition that is not being updated in your asset strategy, it's not being updated in your defect elimination, and obviously there's a lot of leakage. A lot of leakage. You keep spending money. You are not optimizing your maintenance, right? So what we are doing is that. Bentley Nevada traditionally has been very strong in condition monitoring with a very strong domain expertise. Right, so we all come from a machinery background, right? We know the equipment, we know the process, we know the plant very well, and then we have our hardware and software portfolio, which is very well known. And in most of the uh, large critical equipment, they have our, our our solution of condition monitoring, right? So what happened is that in 2021, uh, Bentley Nevada decided to acquire a company called Arms Reliability. A uh, company based of uh, Australia, they have been close to 25 years within reliability business. Uh, from a consultancy background, they have their own software solution, and they come in to help us for the asset strategy, defect elimination, and also the integration to the CMMS system or SAP. Yeah. So we created an integrated APM, uh, integrated APM ecosystem, where all these functional modules. They integrated together so that you don't have any leakages, and then all this gets into one ecosystem. And this ecosystem is actually an open ecosystem, right? I'm coming back to the point that I mentioned earlier. No one vendor can do everything, right? So we make our ecosystem open, so that when you want to address some of the gaps that potentially not able to be addressed by this, the open ecosystem will help to do that clean integration here, yeah, right? 
So that, that's what we are doing and we have invested heavily on this. We are keep building more feature and capability within this ecosystem and you will hear more within the next 6, 12, 18 months, right? More and more feature will come uh, and a lot of things will be cloud-based uh, for easy deployment and also to easily scale up uh, across the enterprise here. So that's what we are doing. And, uh, and our focus is not only on critical machinery, right? I mean, we have been very strong in critical machinery, but our use case has expanded now beyond critical machinery. We are also looking at balance of plant, mid, low critical uh, equipment. And with the acquisition of arms reliability and with the defect elimination modules that they have, we have a lot of knowledge in terms of uh, failure mode, right? I think we have close to like 50,000 failure mode uh, library, you know, this is not only on rotating equipment, we also have failure modes for electrical, static equipment, you know, and uh, all this came from 60 years of Bentley domain knowledge plus 25 years of domain knowledge from the uh, arms reliability team, you know, so we are combining all these to create the right solution to our customers and make sure that it address the right pain points and to solve the issues that you have here. Yeah. So that this is this is what we are doing, right? Uh, on, on an integrated asset management uh, uh, ecosystem, yeah. Okay. And a bit on, 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 on the hardware side of Bentley, right? Because when we talk about digital transformation, if you don't have data, you cannot do anything, right? So we support all the way from the sensor on your equipment to the hardware where it can be a condition monitoring hardware, it can be a protection hardware, all the way to the condition monitoring software uh, at site and also at the business network, right? And, and you can see here, we have various type of hardware and it all depends on your criticality of the equipment, right? So if you can see here, uh, on your left-hand side, uh, you have the uh, hardware for the most critical equipment like your turbo compressors, gas turbines, steam turbines, you know, uh, which is a high speed sampling data uh, with a protection capability, right? When your vibration or temperatures goes up, it will safely shut down the equipment. But you don't need this hardware for a smaller pump or fan or motor, right? So we have various kinds of hardware. So if you go more to the right, you can see the hardwares are uh, being different, like uh, Trendmaster, VB Online Pro, even we have our wireless solution, right? So all this is to help our users to put in the right solution for the right equipment or the right use case, right? Uh, and, and to make sure that we address the right failure modes and we address the right use cases, you know. Uh, so that, that's what we are doing. Uh, and our hardware, our sensor pretty much covers for almost all the critical equipment, mid, low, low equipment, rotating equipment, right? Even receive compressors as well. And what we do is that we take all this data from this sensor and hardware, we push it to our asset condition monitoring software called System 1, right? So typically System 1, legacy, you know that System 1 stays at site. You know, you have a server at site, uh, you have a System 1 server, so something happened, normally people go and look at System 1 to do root cause analysis, right? But now what uh, a lot of organization looking is, is they don't want to have reactive they want to move to proactive, right? So proactive means you want to have real-time data access everywhere, right? And we have to enable that, right? How we can bring that system on data to you sitting at home, working from a coffee shop or working from office, right? Not, not going to the control room at site, right? So we have created uh, what we call as a database replication solution where you can bring in all the system on data at the plant level to your cloud or to your uh, business network, right? And in a cyber secure way. In, in, in a cyber secure way so that you can have direct access to the data uh, to do root cause analysis, you know, you can do proactive uh, monitoring using the uh, capability of what you have within the system one platform, yeah. And, and like I said, it's, it's not only for critical equipment, but it covers the entire plant-wide architecture, yeah, okay? And, and on, on top of that, Bentley is well known with our strong domain expertise and services, right? So we have our software installation services, we have our machinery diagnostic services, 
we provide technical training like i said people process you know so the people piece we provide the technical training uh, you know we enable our customers uh, you know to be self sustainable you know for some of the large organization we are also doing what we call as a skill development program you know so it's like a 2 to 3 years program where we get a batch of 10 20 young engineers or mid level engineers you know we really train them to be expert expert in diagnosing the machine uh, you know not expert in using our software right because like i said it's not only about the software and tool it's also about the people and the knowledge right so we address all the pillars here you know to try to make that whatever investment you are doing is is justifiable and you get the right roi here yeah. all right the next one is obviously on the software piece right i keep talking about asset condition monitoring now i go a bit detail on system one you know system one has been in the market for like 20 22 years now uh it started with the classic version now we are in system one evolution version a lot of improvement have been made in system one and uh, you can see right from this slide uh, what are the use case that we have enabled right like i said previously system one when you hear system one you think about ah uh, it's only vibration uh, monitoring or diagnostic right but we have come beyond than that right i mean it's not only on vibration you know we talk about entire fleet management now you know not only like you put system one for three machine in your plant you know so we are talking about how you can monitor the entire fleet or even if you have multiple site a b c you can monitor everything from a central location yeah so for example turbo machinery monitoring is still there receive compressors we have performance monitoring module in fact this module has been greatly enhanced within the new version of system 1 now uh, we have what we call as diagnostic hmi which is getting more and more popular among system 1 users so you can see here what is diagnostic hmi right so you can literally recreate your entire pnid within system 1 visualization now and with alarms being tagged into all the sensors that you mapped you know so when you see like a red here is saying that you might have a high priority alarm a yellow you might have some issues right so all these was not available before you know and this is one of the powerful feature we have within system 1 we call as a diagnostic hmi so you typically you recreate the entire pnid you know not only your critical equipment but also the process here so that is also a use case part of system 1 uh, we have emission monitoring you know emission monitoring is big thing now we all talk about net zero 2050 carbon and some companies committed 50% carbon reduction by 2030 right and you need tools to monitor the emission before you plan how you want to reduce the emission right and in a lot of country probably not in this region but you see a lot of europe north america canada they have carbon taxation when you talk about carbon taxation you need to quantify your emission measurement right and and system one have that use case as well you know we monitor the flaring uh you know we have a predictive emission monitoring uh for gas turbines uh, as part of system 1 you know we can predictively monitor your emission uh we also enable the case management you know i mean like every software now you have somewhere to manage your case when you have alarm and event uh complex gearbox monitoring uh again plant wide general machinery like right? even small equipment from a wireless data or mid critical low critical asset can be monitored in one ecosystem is system one right now and lastly also fixed equipment right when i say fixed equipment like your heat exchangers boilers you know we can create some custom rules within system one you know to drive the right outcome uh, what we call as rule logics uh, that can be done and all this thing we enable with the uh, the ot and it system you know where i say the cyber security compliant uh uh you know so the conversion between ot and it you know it is all the architecture is basically cyber secured architecture yeah so these are the use case that we enable and in terms of the capability of system one right i mean we we segregate into three pillars the first one is very important is the connectivity piece right and and why the condition monitoring data or the in in this example system one is very important very different than the predictive analytics or or ai capability that you are doing right predictive analytics machine learning ai what it does is that it look at the historical data you create a model, model right and then your sampling rate typically 5 to 10 minutes and it cannot detect any fast transient event that's where you need systems like this 
where it can help you to collect sub-second data, can help you in terms of diagnostic root cause analysis, you know, and, and we enable that with, like I said, the data now sitting in your business network with the replication. And also we can take all the process data from the DCS uh, at a one second interval, right? So what the process data helps, process data typically help you to do a better root cause analysis, right? All the high speed data of vibration temperature from the system on or the Bentley hardware combined with the one second data from DCS like your process, pressure, differential pressure, uh, flow, everything comes in for you to better do a root cause analysis here. And all of this can be en enabled within the uh, system one capability here, okay? That's one on the connectivity. The second piece is that what we have in system one in terms of analytics, right? Nothing fancy here. I know people, when they hear the word analytics, they get very excited, right? People start talking about, oh, modeling, uh, machine learning, AI, right? But if, if, we, if we take a step back, analytics is basically to give you an alert before an event is going to occur, right? So you have the right uh, time to plan the right maintenance action and make sure that there's no catastrophic failure, right? And you can do it in a various way. And one thing, you can do it if you are an existing system one user, I tell you, today you go back, tomorrow you go to your plant, try to start using the available feature within system one, right? And it, it's very powerful, like for example, the core alarm engine, you know, what we call as a condition monitoring alarm. Condition monitoring alarm is basically some software alarms that you can set on your trending data, you can set on your spectrums, what we call as a spectral band, you can set on your uh, polar plots to monitor your 1x, your, uh, your, your phase angles, and all these can give you an early warning uh, when some changes happening, right? especially in steady state, because when the machine is operating in steady state, you don't expect to see significant change unless there is some failure is coming or there's some process issue, right? Very similar to airline as well, right? When you are in your cruising speed, uh, pretty much uh, it's not that critical, right? So you can enable this condition monitoring alarm uh, state-based alarm uh, using the core capability of system one here. Now the next one is what we call as decision support, a bit advanced. So what we have in decision support is that we have two things, right? One, you can create a physics-based custom algorithm within this decision support platform. So what that means is that you can write simple rule or even complex rule within the decision support platform to basically come up with a known failure mode that you know. For example, you have temperature, pressure, you know, you want to write uh, uh, some, some, some rules there. The second one is the inside pack analytics. Inside pack analytics is like a pre-built failure mode, pre-built failure mode that we tie up to certain equipment like a compressor, gas turbine, steam turbine, right, where it can come up with a alert saying that you have an unbalance, you have a misalignment, or you have a other rotodynamic malfunction, right? And these are all part of the inside pack analytics. And if you know about system one classic, we call it a uh, rule packs before. Yeah? Now we come up with the enhanced version called inside pack analytics. Why this inside pack is different than AI or other predictive analytics? Because this is actually looking at the waveform data, which typically the AI or machine learning doesn't look at, right? So we, we, we are talking about the orbit ellipticity, the 1x, 2x, 0.5x, the phase angles, you know, all these rich waveform data going into this inside pack analytics to come up with the right diagnostic saying that, okay, you might have an unbalanced issue or misalignment or rubbing or fluid induced, right? So that's, that's something we have within the analytics. And the last is like what I mentioned, the performance and the emission uh, module, you know, we can do a predictive emission for gas turbines, and, and, and as well, the thermodynamic performance, right, on your compressor, steam turbine pump, where you can monitor the real-time performance curve uh, within the system on here, right? And the last piece is visualization. Like I said, we have evolved a lot. If you look at the system on visualization now, it looks completely different than five years ago or 10 years ago, right? We have, we still have the desktop application and also we have the web application as well. You know, if, if you want to put system on in the cloud, you can have the access to the web application we call it as the integrated APM fleet, right? And, and this enables a lot of users in terms of first line analysis, you know, to do a quick analysis here, right? So in short, 
what I, what you are looking here uh, is is within the asset condition monitoring uh, solution that we have, which is coming from System One, and this is actually basically one of the pillar within the integrated asset management, right? And and we have the other two pillars which comes together to create the entire ecosystem here. Okay. So that's pretty much I wanted to share today, right? I mean, start off with what is the digital transformation trend, what we observe, how to achieve a successful digital transformation with the right tools, process and people. And then what we have in Bentley, right, from the integrated asset management ecosystem and as well very focused on condition monitoring, right? I didn't want to go into what Baker Hughes can do in the AI platform space because we have capability within AI as well, you know. We have uh, our sister business who have partnered with the AI platform provider called C3. So we have a JV company called BHC3. We, we provide that solution as well. But today's focus was very much to share with you more on the condition monitoring side, the asset strategy, which is more relevant, right? Because AI, when you talk about AI, you know, we start talking about how you want to scale up uh, something from uh, 10 equipment to maybe 1000 equipment, right? I think that's where the AI comes in and helps you here. Okay. So before I end, before I go to the question and answer, I just want to give you a quick case study example, right? How uh, one of our, our customers, you know, uh, who, who gain benefit uh, from, from the entire ecosystem I mentioned here, right? I mean, this is just an example I'm showing from an offshore platform, but this pretty much I see this kind of success from um, a lot of customers who is doing remote monitoring now, you know, how they can have the data in their central location to monitor the sites, remote sites uh, located within the region or even within the country, right? So this particular customer, they have a, a central processing platform, it's an oil production platform, and they have a few unmanned platform, right? So the pain point for them is that they have, they, they were not able to increase the production because whenever they increase the production, uh, they don't know what is the condition of the uh, pumps, one. Second is they also realize that there's high vibration on the piping, right? And they don't have any data to, 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 to see what is the safe level, you know, how much they can push the pump uh, before they need to stop. Uh, so what happened was we went there, you know, again, we start, to start with the discoveries, you know, we start with maintenance action plan, the gap analysis. And finally, we and the customer agreed, okay, for this kind of problem that you want to solve, I think the right solution is one and a right and cheap solution is one. Why not? we install wireless sensor on your piping and on your pump because these are rolling element bearings and then we transmit the wireless data using 4G connectivity from the unmanned platform to the central processing platform and in the central processing platform there were some critical machine which already with Bentley Nevada hardware right so we will bring all this data push all this data into one system one server within the central processing platform and this central processing platform server it is pushing the data to the HQ uh, onshore, right? And what happened is that the condition monitoring engineer, you know, able to look at the real-time data, both static and dynamic data, and when there is some problem, he can immediately notify the people at the central processing platform whether is it safe to ramp up the pump to increase the production or not, what is the piping vibration condition look like, right? And, and, and th th that's one of the savings or one of the big benefits they see. The second is that when some failure occurs, you know, this is again two scenarios, right? What they used to do before and how it changed, how the uh, asset management workflow changed after they deployed the solution, right? And when they do a remote monitoring. So before this, when they sense that there is some problem with the equipment in the offshore, what they need to do? They need to get a work permit. They need to identify someone mobilize them, go to the offshore platform, check the machine condition, collect the data, demobilize, come to the onshore, talk to the expert, identify what is the problem, plan the corrective action, prepare the tools, and then another second round, they need to go to the offshore platform to do the maintenance action, right? And it's a long process. And going to the offshore platform, it's, it's not easy and it's not cheap. You know, you go with chopper, it's expensive. Even you go by boat, it's expensive, right? But what happened now with the remote technology, remote access data that they have onshore, real-time data, very simple. When there is a problem, all the experts are sitting in the central location. 
you know, they can look at any anomaly, uh, they can do a root cause analysis, immediately they plan the corrective action, one time go to the platform, fix the problem and come back, right? So you can see significant different, significant changes and benefit they get uh, by optimizing the workflow. And these are some of the huge benefit that they gain on top of increasing their production, leveraging this technology, right? So I just thought of sharing this. I think this is also fairly applicable for any customers. You have multiple different sites or you have all your experts sitting in the HQ, you know, uh, these are the right tools or technology and the process that you want to uh, embed to get the right value and also the success, right? And again, I'm coming back <laughs> saying that three things, people, process and technology need to be there for a successful digital transformation. And the second thing is that look at partners and collaboration, right? Because no one vendor can do everything. And, and I'm telling this to myself as well, right? I cannot go and tell anyone that, hey, my solution is magic, right? I can do everything. No, I think that's not the case. We would like to partner, you know, we would like to do something which is best to address your problem and your use cases, yeah. Okay. So I am close to the hour. I still have 10 minutes. So I'll just stop here. I think that's end of my presentation. Thank you everyone. And uh, now I'm open the floor for question and answer, yeah. Thank you. ไม่ทราบมีข้อคือเนื้อหามันเด่นนะเนาะก็ไม่แน่ใจว่ามีใครมีข้อสงสัยตรงไหนเพิ่มเติมมันนะครับหรือบางท่านที่อาจจะเข้ามาทีหลังก็ผมย้ําอีกทีหนึ่งนะครับว่าพอเราคุยเรื่องไอ้ดิจิตอลไลฟ์เฟชั่นเนี่ยมันมีรายละเอียดอีกย่อยค่อนข้างเยอะเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยถ้าเกิดอยากจะให้เราเข้าไปคุยในรายละเอียดในดีเทลของแต่ละโรงงานนั้นๆเนี่ยคือสามารถติดต่อมาได้หรือว่าเหมือนที่เขาโชว์ในเรื่องของไอ้ตัวไอ้ซอฟต์แวร์อะไรตรงนี้เราสามารถนำไปเดโมให้ดูได้นะครับประมาณนี้มีข้อสงสัยไหมครับถามได้นะครับโอเคโอเค when we maybe the case study we talking about the platform now he ask about the how about the medium size or small size is still a cap uh, capability to ability yeah so, like I said, the concept is same. So, if you are onshore, you have few different plant, and and your expert all sitting in the office. Let's say you are in Bangkok, but your plant is across the country, and your equipment are uh, mid or low critical. Let's say what you are doing right now is that you need to send someone every month or every three months to do a portable data collection, right? But all that can be digitalized by putting in the right sensors. Uh, it can be a wireless sensor, it can be a hardwired sensor, right? and then you push all the data into your, uh, what, what we call as a business network, so that remotely you have the real-time condition monitoring of the equipment, and if you see any issues on that equipment, you can quickly do a uh, analysis and then do the right action to fix that problem. Yeah. So it, it is applicable not only for offshore platform, obviously the offshore platform sees more benefit by doing that, but we also have this type of deployment for a lot of onshore sites as well. Yeah. ก็เดี๋ยวขอเสริมนะครับจากคําถามที่ถามว่าจากตัวอย่างเนี่ยมันดูเป็นเหมือนลักษณะเป็นแพลตฟอร์มดูเหมือนเป็นอุตสาหกรรมที่มันใหญ่แต่ในทางปฏิบัติเนี่ยถึงจะเป็นขนาดมีเดียมหรือว่าขนาดเล็กเนี่ยมันก็เป็นหลักการเดียวกันเพียงแต่ตัวเซนเซอร์มันอาจจะใช้น้อยลงแต่เราก็ยังใช้ในหลักการของการรีโมทได้เหมือนกันนะครับมีเพิ่มเติมอีกไหมครับอ uh, okay. uh, I have two questions. First is uh, I look at the architecture. It was a system one Evo, maybe the new version. If my plan, we have a system one classic. Okay, the remote monitoring also is possible to do, or we need to upgrade to system one, the latest version. Okay, that that's a good question. Even with system one classic, uh, there is means to do a remote monitoring. So we still have. We still support technology like Citrix or 2X, you know, where you can do a remote access. But again, 
this all depends on the IT policy of your company, right? Because more and more uh, IT cybersecurity team, they don't allow you to do uh, remote desktop using this type of application, right? If your organization IT is saying that, no, we don't, we don't allow you to do that, then obviously you need to upgrade and go with the replication because replication is, is a database application, right? And it has been approved with, with most of the large organization IT security here. Yeah. So we, we have the option with Classic, but it all depends on the requirement uh, of your cybersecurity and IT team, yeah. Okay, thank you. Second, second question is uh, on the cloud, because our organization now moving the applications from uh, level three to the cloud. So this application is compatible for cloud installation, maybe on the virtual machine on the cloud and data can be stored in the cloud. Correct. Uh, so there's different approach. You can have a physical server in your business network. You can do a virtual machine on a physical server on cloud, or you can directly deploy it on cloud as well, you know. And more and more large organization we are seeing, they are deploying it on cloud. Reason behind is they want to integrate this with other applications that they are doing. For example, they have their dashboard, right? They want to monitor all the KPIs. In fact, we have our dashboard as well, a combined dashboard of the asset condition monitoring asset strategy. But sometimes the users, they have their in-house dashboard, they are monitoring different other things as well, right? So putting the system one in cloud will enable the clean integration between the third party application as well. Yeah. Okay, right. thank you. Thank you for the question, yeah. ก็เดี๋ยวสรุปที่คำถามมานะครับเป็นถามเรื่องคืออย่างที่ทางคุณคีรันแกบอกของเบลลี่เนวาดาเนี่ยเรามีมา60 60กว่าปีละเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยที่คำถามแรกที่เขาถามก็คือเรื่อง System 1เนี่ยมันจะมีเวอร์ชันเก่าที่เราเรียกว่าคลาสสิกแล้วปัจจุบันเนี่ยมันเป็น e v o l หรือ Evolution สามารถใช้ได้ไหมก็คือทำได้แต่อย่างกับอย่างที่คุณกีรันอธิบายว่าเวลาเราใช้เรื่องระบบรีโมทเนี่ยบางทีมันก็ต้องขึ้นอยู่กับ IT policy ของแต่ละบริษัทซึ่งตรงนี้เราสามารถที่จะคุยกันได้ว่าเราเราจะทํากันยังไงเราจะอนุญาตให้ให้มีการ e x c e p t กันยังไงนะครับแล้วก็คําถามข้อที่2เรื่องการเก็บ Data ในคลาวด์ก็คือมันก็จะทําได้ทั้ง2แบบนะครับก็คือจะมีเซิร์ฟเวอร์ในโรงงานที่เก็บ Data ไว้เองก็ได้หรือจะผ่านคลาวก็ได้แต่ก็คือสุดท้ายก็ต้องขึ้นอยู่กับไอทีของบริษัทนั้นๆประมาณนี้ครับเดี๋ยวพี่ใช้นิดดีกว่าครับเพิ่นเราอยากได้บูธเราไม่ได้บูธนะอาจจะเดี๋ยวผมคุยนอกรอบก็ได้ครับนะครับต้องขอโทษด้วยจริงๆครับเพิ่นเพิ่นว่าทาง CBM ครั้งนี้รวดเร็วมากแต่โชคดีที่เรายังได้สล็อตเวลานะครับแซ่บใช่ไหมโอเคเดี๋ยวผมถามเขาดีกว่าโอเค regarding of the we are talking about the we are can connect to the third party like a SAP system how we connect or we can connect directly or we have the any procedure so if we look at SAP we are talking about uh, APIs in every software is going with API now right so we have the right APIs to integrate But if we look at uh, from a historian perspective or from uh, uh, industrial software perspective, I think our preferred data integration is using OPC, either OPC DA or OPC UA, right? Uh, so these are the two uh, mechanism that we are using. Yeah. But most of the cloud uh, integration is happening uh, via API. Yeah. เอางี้แล้วกันครับเดี๋ยวผมบอก
ป็นเบอร์โทรผมแอดไลน์ได้เลยแล้วกันครับศูนย์แปดเก้าครับจดไว้ก่อนก็ได้ครับเพิ่นเพิ่นมันไม่ได้ขึ้นในนี่เนาะโอเคศูนย์แปดเก้านะครับแปดเก้าหกเก้าห้าสองศูนย์ครับแอดไลน์ได้เลยครับทักมาว่าเออเอ้ยวันนี้มา c ีบีมช่วงคุณคีรันนะครับแล้วเดี๋ยวเราคุยอีกทีก็ได้นะครับมีอีกอีกครั้งหนึ่งนะครับศูนย์แปดเก้าแปดเก้าหกเก้าห้าสองศูนย์ครับผมชื่ออภิชาติแอดไลน์มาเลยครับทักมาเลยครับ